Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Life has just been really busy, so it would make sense that I only finished one thing this week. This is not the book that I promised last week, which if you've been around my channel, you know that I'm a mood reader and just because I have an idea to read a book doesn't mean that's what actually gets read. The book I did read for my high priority read for the Choose Your Own Readathon is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Funny story about this book. In January of 2023, I went to my boss who was also a reader and asked her what her about five favorite books of 2022 were, and her response, she paused. My favorite book of 2021 is The House in the Cerulean Sea, and that's what you really need to read. She did eventually give me her favorite books of 2022, but like every month afterwards, she's like, hey, have you read it? Hey, have you read it? Hey, have you read it? So I got on the hold list for my library and would just tell her, still on hold, still waiting, there's still this many people. Hey, I'm going to go pick up the book. So. I changed this to my high priority read because someone in my life really, really wanted me to read it and absolutely love this book. All the hype around this book is well earned. This book follows Linus Baker, who is a caseworker for the Department of Magical Youth. Not the exact title. The acronym is DICOMI. And he is selected for high profile investigation into this house which is an orphanage he's never heard about and with children he's never heard about either and he goes there and they only give him very minimal information from the minimal information he has certain expectations of the children then basically it ends up in a found family this is very much a character driven book the plot is really in the background, it's more about the found family and about actually giving people a chance to show you who they are versus make assumptions. And if you're going to have to pin me down to a plot, I'm gonna say it's about breaking down systemic racism, systemic classism, all the systemics. They keep repeatedly saying in this book that it just starts with one voice. One voice has to say, hey, this is wrong in order to get things to start moving. This is one that I definitely want to own and have in my own future collection to reread again and again. Then the next prompt I got for the Choose Your Own Readathon was read a book with someone who has a chronic illness or disability. And for that, I chose Broken Places and Outer Spaces by Nanetti Okorafor. Now, like I said, I've only finished one book, so I am still currently reading this one. And I would call this a creative nonfiction. The events of this book, it really happened to Nanetti Okorafor. So this is kind of her journey realizing that she is a science fiction writer. And it came about because she had a surgery that caused her to be paralyzed from the waist down and she had to rebuild herself. And during that time and process, that's really where she discovered her love of writing. And she even calls herself a cyborg in here. It's kind of fun. Nanetti Okorafor is the first author I read who was writing Afrofuturism. So it's a branch of science fiction set in Africa and marries the culture of Africa with the science fiction. So things like Juju, which white people are going to consider as fantasy, but is a part of African culture, is interwoven in those societies. Okorafor's writing is just simply taking my breath away. I will be finishing this over the weekend. And then I have one more prompt for the Choose Your Own Readathon adventure. And I won't have it done before the readathon finishes, but I am going to finish my readathon before I start in with my magical readathon TBR. So then what am I reading next? Something on my magical readathon TBR, which that video should have come out probably a couple weeks before this one since I'm behind on my weekly wrap ups coming out, which is okay. writing wrap up. I have taken a break from writing. I think this is okay. 
on the reverse, I've been thinking about writing more and I've been talking about writing and my sister and I are going to try to write a novel together for NaNoWriMo. So we're going to start plotting that and figuring out. So no, I am normally a pantser or a discovery writer, but I find when I try to write things with my sister, I need to have some sort of outline so I know I am writing this from this character's perspective for this end. And it's just a very different writing experience. And for some reason, I find it easier to do it that way. But when it's just me, myself, and I, like, I hate outlines. It's the weirdest thing for me. For other media, I actually haven't watched a lot this week. I think we watched an episode of Crime Scene Kitchen. So there's a YouTube channel called Biffa Plays Indie Games, and we really like his videos of fixing traffic on city skylines. It's just fun to kind of watch that. I'm old. I remember playing the original Sims when it came out and I like city game builders. I just don't play a whole lot nowadays. So it's always fun to watch it. So we've been watching his also as they've been talking about the next city skylines number two is coming out and how it's going to be different but still have similar features. It, it's been fun to watch. And so that has been my week. Pretty short wrap up, but we're going strong and we're healthy. That I guess is the most important part because it's been really hot this week and not just hot. The humidity has been high. Gotta love the Midwest. I hope you guys have had a wonderful July. Let me know what was your favorite book in July. I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day. <music>